All right, we got a lot to dive into on today's edition of Football at Four. Plus, it's WrestleMania weekend. Saturday, Sunday. I haven't watched in quite some time. I am lost on everything. But I feel like I have to check in on WrestleMania. I actually have heard, John, that the WWE is considering going on hiatus for a little while after uh, WrestleMania. Is that accurate? Uh, it is accurate. I mean, there's not much they can do. They were um, they were taping television. They taped WrestleMania. It's already in the can uh, at their performance center. They're um, sort of like an NFL facility, high class facility, which is in Orlando. And uh, Florida just put into place a, a stay at home order, uh, so it kind of limits them. Uh, from taping uh, at the performance center and you have to go you're pretty much going around the country and it's interesting because that's what AEW is doing they're going around the country to states that don't have stay at home orders to try to keep uh, producing product uh, I think ultimately everybody's going to have to shut down including uh, WWE unfortunately Crazy. Uh, I have not uh, been following along. I'm disappointed in myself. Uh, I have, like, turned on the channel. It is a little odd watching them do their thing without the fans in there. I got to admit, it is kind of awkward oh, to watch. It's terrible. <laughs> Josh likes it. I, 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 I can't watch. I haven't watched since the first week where they did uh, the no fan television tapings, either show, either company. I can't watch. I, 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 and it's depressing to me because I'm a big wrestling fan. I think everybody knows that. Yeah. And I, I, I always joke, uh, like I can deal with no sports. <laughs> maybe, maybe when the NFL kicks off, that would upset me. But I, you know, uh, I can deal with no sports, but I can't deal with no pro wrestling. That's pretty sad, and it's <laughs> killing me that they can't run shows. I said, I, you know, the no sports thing hasn't been bothering me. Because, yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. Because I feel a sense of being like a normal person where I just sit down and get into a television show. Like, I exactly. people always make fun of me because they're like, you never saw this show? I'm like, well, I'm always watching sports. I got to work. Yeah. You know, and now I'm I like. Agree. I agree. It's, it's a nice respite, I think, for people like us. Uh, I, I just, and, uh, I just uh, started The Americans on uh, Amazon Prime. Ah, oh, tremendous show. Okay, so I should stick with it. I'm about five episodes oh, yeah. in, and, like, we're going back and forth whether it's grabbed us or not yet. And I'm like, yeah, I can take it or leave it. I mean, I'd like to keep going, but because I have heard very good things about it. Yeah, I would I, re, I would recommend sticking with that. Okay. You'll, you'll, be, you'll be – it's a long way. I think it ran for – Six seasons. I don't know. Eight, was six, it? Six, yeah. six. Uh, Six. Yeah. Uh, so you got a ways to go. I mean, that's something you're going to be entrenched for a while. But yeah, it's a very good show. Something I tells me, recommend. John, the time is on my side. Yeah, it is. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. Uh, all right, let's get into some of the football stuff today. We were just talking about this before football at four. I like the 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 news from the Bears today that there will be an open competition, and I wish we saw this more. And in fact, it it really happened with the Eagles a lot. Uh, it happened when Kevin Cobb was here, and they had Michael Vick. Cobb was clearly not better than Vick, but Cobb got handed the starting position, and that bothered me. It happened again uh, when I believe Vick and Foles were here, and they had at like you know were basically uh, Foles got the job and you know there wasn't really a competition the bears have come out after originally saying it was going to be trubisky's job there this is an open competition do you really think it's an open competition or is it now in fact Foles' job no it's Foles' job and and that's what they have to say is specifically ryan pace because what he did and trading up from one spot when he didn't even have to uh, to get Mitchell Trubisky at number two overall. Remember, I mean, that's Carson Wentz territory. Uh, th this guy was – and we're not even bringing in yet that they had an opportunity that same year to take to Sean Watson, never mind Patrick Mahomes. And they said, no, we want Mitchell Trubisky, and we're going to insure ourselves – and move up one spot to get him. Yeah, this was the that Philly was the draft. draft in Philadelphia. Yep. When we were there doing the show, 
I remember I was sitting next to Pete Thompson shaking my head. <laughs> I'm like, what are they doing? Uh, and even I, at the moment, uh, in, in that particular moment, didn't think it could be possibly be as bad as it has been uh, for Mitchell Trubisky. But I joked, if Nick Foles can't beat out Mitch Trubisky, it's time to shutter the Folesian society for good. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, <laughs> this is not a, a competition. It shouldn't be a competition. The Bears know they have to move on, but Pace is in an awkward position because he drafted the guy. He's tethered to the guy as GMs are when they take quarterbacks that high. So he has to go through this rigmarole. Um, but they they got Nick Foles for a reason. And then you look at who's there. Matt Nagy's the head coach. He's got a history with Nick Foles. John D. Filippo's now there. Got the history with Nick Foles. Bill Lazor's there. Got the history with Nick Foles. I, I, I mean, it's clear. And that's just lip service that the Bears are, are going through right now, and that's just part of the NFL, and you have to do those things. Uh, yes, and uh, with that, I guess the next question would be, uh, we are in an interesting spot with the other two guys, Cam Newton and Jameis Winston. So I'll ask you, number one, do they land on teams, one, two, like do they take backup jobs, or three, do they just basically – you know what? I'm going to wait it out and wait for someone to get hurt. You know, it, it is interesting. I mean, you could take that path um, and hope for that Sam Bradford like situation uh, when Teddy Bridgewater went down in Minnesota and in the last minute uh, the Eagles were able to get the 14th pick in the draft and it worked out for Philadelphia. But this is completely different because you're talking about free agency not being on the team. And, and waiting for that desperation, ultimately it'll probably come. So it, it's you know somebody's going to get hurt, and there aren't a lot of great backup quarterbacks in this league. And if there are quarterbacks like Cam Newton on the street and Jameis Winston on the street, uh, somebody will go out and, and make them the starter and give them a significant deal. But it's tough to to be that patient and maybe. You know, we just talked about it. Time is on people's sides. There's not going to be an off season, So it's not as pressing as it would be in a typical year where business was going on as usual. So maybe somebody like Winston, somebody like Newton can take their time and not be uh, pressured uh, because nothing's going on anyway. Right. So it, it is an interesting uh, take. Yeah, and I wonder, you know, there's a lot of scenarios that go through my head, especially with Cam Newton. I mean, this guy was the MVP of the league. Winston, different story. I think he's probably more talented than a lot of guys who have positions right now. There's certain teams that I'm looking at and thinking, all right, uh, and one which would be New England. I mean, does New England go with what they have until they decide, all right, we just can't go with these guys, and then they make a call to one of those guys, and do both of those guys – both sit out and wait for New England to make that decision. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard to imagine uh, the Patriots going forward with Brian Hoyer versus Jared Stidham. I I just, I I don't know uh, if that, I mean, they might really like uh, the young quarterback and think he can develop into something down the road. But, man, that is that is testicular fortitude, to use a Mick Foley uh, uh, quote, uh, if you're going to go that direction. Um, so it's interesting. I, I mean, people have talked about the Chargers as well, and they said they're comfortable with Tyrod Taylor. Uh, I, I don't know. I, organizations make uh, goofy decisions at times. And, yeah, I mean, talk about it all the time. If you're just – in a vacuum and saying, okay, who's the most talented guy? Well, you're not going to say Brian Hoyer's more talented than Cam Newton or, or uh, Jameis Winston, and you're not going to say Tyrod Taylor is. There's, there's a lot. You're not going to say Nick Foles is. What the heck is Chicago? I mean, Chicago needs a quarterback. In theory, that's a defense ready to win right now. 
and Jameis Winston's on the street and, and Cam Newton's on the street and you're picking Nick Foles. There's a lot of teams you could say this about. I, you know, and I was wondering why, like, did the Bears jump the gun for the trade? They gave up a draft pick to get Foles when they could have just signed Winston or Newton to compete. Well, no, in their instance, I mean, that was a, a, a measured decision. And I just mentioned the history of, of Matt Nagy and, and Flip and, and, and Bill Lazor being there. I mean, they wanted Nick Foles. That was their goal. There was early speculation in Chicago that Teddy Bridgewater would be uh, the quarterback they went after. But they wanted Nick Foles, and that was a calculated decision. So, hey, teams make bad decisions all the time. And I, I think there's a lot of teams making a lot of bad decisions. And that's every every year, every season, every off season. And I, I, I mean, yeah, I, Jameis Winston is a guy specifically. Uh, Cam is a little bit different, even though he's obviously more proven. You mentioned the MVP. I do have concerns about his health. I have no idea if he's healthy, number one. It's tough to figure that out in this environment because you can't have doctors, you can't have physicals. Um, and so that, to me, is real. And and just his style of play at his age, uh, we've been talking about it for years. Ultimately, that was going to catch up to him because he takes, takes such a beating. Jameis Winston, guy throws for 5,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, and you need to figure out how to teach him to stay away from the mistake. I mean, and that's not easy to do. I'm not saying it is. But it's a lot easier to teach somebody to stop making mistakes than it is to teach them to throw for 5,000 yards. Yeah. There aren't a lot of people on this planet that can throw for 5,000 yards in the NFL. He's one of them. Uh, he, he, to me, is a very unique situation. Now, there, there's a couple of quarterback um, you know, scenarios, I guess, that I still feel are maybe unsettled. And I would like to get your thoughts on the available guys and those situations, one of which is Miami. Now, I know they have Fitzpatrick, but they brought a lot of guys in in free agency. Do they feel like, okay, we can bring Cam Newton here and possibly, or do they think Fitzpatrick can make them a playoff team? Well, I, no, I, I think the Dolphins are about to draft. I mean, they're going to draft a quarterback. And it's just a matter of which one can they go up and get to? Uh, are, are are they completely uh, comfortable with his health? Uh, if not, they'll go in a different direction. But they're going to get a quarterback. So they've made their decision, and and maybe where they are in their rebuilding process, it makes more sense to go with a rookie quarterback and try to build from there. And and. Ryan Fitzpatrick is everyone jokes the best bridge. The best bridges in the world are, are Brooklyn, Golden Gate, and Ryan Fitzpatrick. That's <laughs> uh, the joke in the NFL. Okay, what about Buffalo? I mean, I know they have Allen. I know they like him, but you have to imagine it. They got to think he held them back a little bit last year. No, I, I would. <laughs> I mean, I. You know, people in Buffalo are so excited uh, about the act. They're like the Browns this year. Yeah, I mean, and, and they got Stephon Diggs, and everyone's like, I mean, look at, you know, watch some Stephon Diggs. Watch the game against Philadelphia. Watch that game where he just absolutely gouged um, the Eagles and, and the three touchdown game. And look at the dimes. Uh, Kirk Cousins was throwing to him. Uh, that ain't going to happen in Buffalo. It's just not. I mean, Josh Allen's not accurate. And this is a guy who complained when he didn't get the football in Minnesota with you, – you can say a lot of bad things about Kirk Cousins, doesn't win big games. What you can't do is is say he can't throw the football mm -hmm. because he, he's, you know, fourth, dating back to Washington – just huge numbers throwing the football down the field. He's going to be happy, Stephon Diggs, with, with Josh Allen throwing him the football? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't think that's going to work out. And on the other hand, you say, 
because there's been some rumors, would they bring in Cam Newton to be a backup? Think about the pressure on Josh Allen performing uh, with Cam Newton as the backup. And, you know, that first, I don't know, 10 for 25 game where Stefan Diggs touches it twice, you don't think Stefan's going to be calling for Cam Newton? <laughs> they got a problem up there, and I think people don't realize. Uh, I'm glad that you uh, spell it out the way you did that. That you did there. Uh, a couple other interesting quarterback scenarios. Okay, Pittsburgh has Roethlisberger coming back, but he's older. He's a hit away from getting hurt yeah. again, and they were a dumpster fire at quarterback last year. So, is that an attractive spot for one of those two guys? Well, they need uh, obviously an error apparent. You have no idea. Uh, how Ben is going to come back from that injury. Um, and, and you really have no idea um, how effective he's going to be at this stage of his career. Uh, obviously, he's far closer to the finish line than the starting gun. Um, so to me, yeah, but you you wouldn't want another guy who's injury prone and banged up like Cam. So to me, that would be, make more sense for Jameis Winston. I mean, it, you saw enough of uh, Mason Rudolph, I would think, to know he's not the future. Uh, Duck Hodges is not the future. Um, so to me, that would be, yeah, that would be a logical spot for as a backup for, for Jameis. Yes, backup spot there. And I guess, uh, you know, most of these are backups. Now, I guess Jacksonville, you know, you got to beat out Gardner Minshew, but they're probably in the quarterback in the game in the draft, right? I mean, I can't imagine. That's another team similar to New England. I can't imagine. <laughs> they really believe Gardner Minshew is going to be their starting quarterback. So do they hold out? They and just, do. Do they wait and say, we, we'll go with Cam Newton? Maybe. I, I mean, you got to have somebody in there. Uh, I mean, to me, that's more of an indictment uh, of Nick Foles than it is supportive of Gardner Minshew, uh, the fact that Nick lost his job to Gardner. Uh, I can't <laughs> – there's another one. Uh, I mean, how could you sit there and, and – because this is – let's be honest. This is a public-facing industry, the, the NFL. So you have to deal – with your fan base as well uh, as all the other things. The, the, when you're making decisions, you have to sell it to your fan base. How could you possibly sell, oh, Minshew's better than Cam Newton, Minshew's better than James Winston, uh, options on the street. Right. I don't know how you do that other than you're, you're going the, the Sixers route and, and Miami route and just tanking the season. If you want to spin it that way and say, okay, Trevor Lawrence down the road, uh, because Minshew's not a starting quarterback in the NFL. All right. Uh, now, the other scenarios, I, I mean, most of these would be as backup spots. Well, I think all of them. I don't think there's another opening for a starting job. The one is the Chargers. I guess you can kind of throw them in. But most of them are like, all right, which of these starters – do I not feel is on the strongest of ground? And I guess you look at maybe, I don't know, the Raiders, the Broncos, if you think the kid Locke is, you know, just isn't cut out for it. Um, I don't know. Do you take a shot and say maybe Garoppolo? I, I mean, is there another spot that I would that you would find these guys to be able to go down the Tannehill road? Yeah, I, I, I think – Las Vegas is one, and we've talked about John Gruden a lot. I mean, he doesn't like Derek Carr. I don't care what happens, what he doesn't. And, and that's just John's history. That's what he is. And if he gets a Jameis Winston, if he gets a Cam Newton, he'll love him for a week and he'll sour on them. I mean, that's just who he is. That's his history. Uh, he's always looking uh, for the bigger and better deal, so to speak. He's always looking at the other side of the fence. He always thinks the grass is greener. Uh, he always thinks the next quarterback is better than the last quarterback. That's just who he has been, who he is. Uh, and Derek Carr isn't um, – uh, he's a mediocre quarterback. I'm not going to say he's terrible, but he's certainly not at the level where the Raiders once expected him to be. Um, 
So, yeah, that's a, a logical spot. Uh, Denver seems to believe in Locke. Now, I, I don't. Uh, I think they're jumping the gun. I think that's fair to say. But I, I don't think they're looking for a situation where someone could come in to push um, Drew Locke. And I, 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 that might be a mistake, but that's a similar situation to Buffalo. It might be a mistake, but they don't want an accomplished guy sitting there on the shoulder of a young quarterback that the fans are going to scream for at the first sign of a bad game. That's just a, a, a bad situation. All right, uh, football for Johnny Mac at J.F. McMullen. We'll leave you with this. Uh, Deshaun Jackson uh, saying that, hey, I have a lot to prove this season, confident. But he said, yes, I definitely have that extra chip on my shoulder. One thing I can say is I'm always going to have my hard hat on. I'm coming to work, and I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to give my best effort. We've got a lot of light left, and I'm going to shine on it. So, Jackson, you know, essentially admitted, yes, I have a chip on my shoulder because I guess he hears the people who are questioning the Eagles for not getting wide receivers this offseason. Yeah, I, I mean, from Sean's perspective, he's saying, you know, look at week one. When I'm healthy, I can still play. Yeah. I, I think – I think people misconstrue not being able uh, to count on a 33-year-old receiver uh, whose, you know, biggest tool in the toolbox is his speed. So, number one, even if you're completely healthy, uh, even if you have a reputation for durability, uh, ultimately you're going to be affected by the calendar. Uh, and then the second part is the injuries. I, I mean, I, I don't think it's a prudent idea to go into the season saying, okay, we're going to count on Deshaun Jackson as our top wide receiver. Uh, and, and the Eagles realize that. Mm -hmm. you, you can be hopeful, but as Howie always says, hope is not a strategy. All right. Uh, I'm looking for, you know, as we talked about, you know, not having sports on, we've kind of dove into some television shows. I am looking forward to uh, the, NF uh, the NFL draft and having, like, that whole element, sitting in on a Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, and diving into this thing, which we will start to do on Monday a little bit more. We'll start to get John's takes on the draft and some more draft stuff. Uh, that's coming up on Monday's edition of Football at Four. Follow John all weekend long for the NFL and Eagles at J. F. McMullen. Thanks, bud. All right. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, man. John's back Monday with more football at four on the Sports Bash.